Hello, this is the Lego City Grocery Store for 2022. I bought it for its retail price of $70 US and it comes with 404 pieces. I put all 404 pieces of it together over on my Twitch channel live. In addition to the store that gives the set its name, this comes with four minifigures, two vehicles, and a bunch of random accessories, including a lot of food items, thankfully, especially a lot of produce items. I do want to give you a quick spin around this so you can see the overall shape and size of it, what you're really paying for here. Yes, there is a parking lot space out here, just some random street, and we'll talk about that a little bit, but store is the main thing I feel like you're paying for, and the main thing that you want here, something that, something that LEGO doesn't do that frequently these days, actually, honestly. They've not done it that many times in the past at all. But let me take a bunch of this stuff away so we can focus on just that store for right now. Starting from the front, there's a lot of good stuff here, including the relatively new double door setup, which is a very efficient one, has a single sticker there. Nice sign with the giant carrot on top, single sticker used up here, but I appreciate the continuation of the, the angled shapes that they've been using for a lot of city stuff most recently. This is a nice little display that they've set up, a little, little, little uh, turnstile thing with a couple of uh, buckets just kind of on a tree to represent these flowers that you can buy. These do fall out much too easily, I will say. You know, they're just a little bit precarious there. And then you have some, some produce in crates here, some miscellaneous produce, including two colors of apples. There's a banana down in there. There's also a bundle of grapes, the ice cream cone piece they've used for grapes before in the purple color. And then a couple carrots over here and a couple of the new, brand new and rather perfect. Look at that, look at that. Corn cob, I love that. Bright green is the main color, dual molded with yellow. It is sized really well. It's sized better than most produce that they've ever made for minifigs. And it's just, it's just a really good piece. I hope to see a lot more of these in the future and I expect them to do, uh, because of the dual molding, I expect them to do some, uh, some white corn at some point in the future as well. There are two ears of that. Also up above, you've got some lights, plenty of windows around the place and some solar panels up top around this side. You get into a little bit of curvature here, a little, little, it's got that in the front as well. You can't see it as, as well though, but a uh, little bit of shades of the, the downtown diner set this, sorry about the focus there. This is a print. So that's good to have this available as a, as a print again, and then parking lot space. Yeah, just room for two things to be parked there. This is actually an entrance way for cargo to be pushed in. Uh, this is kind of like a, a little, a little convenient conveyance. Yeah. And these things really exist. However, well, let's, let's see how that, that works a little bit later on for right now. Let me finish looking at outside. And I'll show you how that functionality works, including with this. Another thing, this whole side, is super, super plain minimum number of blocks here. You can see the the one by four by three bricks are just stacked up, just filling up the space. Okay, let's check out the inside. First of all, this is the checkout counter. So the person who works at the store would, I'm gonna go reach across here, would be standing here, right? To do checkout services. So this is how that, so this is all customer area over here. Got a little bit of fish there. So it's also the, the fish market uh, 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 counter, I, I guess just a couple of them, exact same color. This is a print that came out about a year ago. And you've got some products on the wall over there and some simple shelving units that are easy enough to access. They give you enough room for especially younger fingers to get in there and grab one of these things from the top. It's not too difficult to deal with that. You know, it's not too, too frustrating. It's nice that they give you the space. It's important for the sake of play. Good design work there. This is actually a place where you bring your bottles back to get your deposit back. And that has a relatively recent print. I think that's also about a year, a year old on it. And just a slot where you can, you can push a bottle through an empty bottle through. And that's why you have this crate out here for those bottles to, to get caught. So by default, you're not going to have these connected. Sorry about that. Come back here. There we go. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going to bring one of these in. I'll just show you, you push it in from the other side and it's simply going to fall in. That's all. Just that, and then you can take this away and we'll see a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, some bread products over here, that's your bakery. So two baguettes in the two colors, the two main colors, a couple of croissants, and they leave you enough room to pose minifigures around here to be actually shopping in the space. And then over here, you can buy some bottles, well, 
bottles of, uh, of, of ginger ale and, uh, and root beer, you know, right? That's, that's definitely what would be in those bottles. And now is the appropriate time for me to show you how this over here works because there is a forklift in the set and I'll show you that forklift up close in just a moment, but the forklift can bring in goods from the outside delivered by whatever means. And unfortunately I do have to be a little careful with this cause it's, uh, 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 come on, let's go. Let's, let's, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, 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 is it, is it gonna, is it gonna, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, uh, wait, uh, 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 still a little bit stuck. See, it's, it's imperfect. It's imperfect how it works, but that's the general idea. You deliver goods into the space and then this can become some counter space as well. What are those supposed to be? The most giant tomatoes of all time? Or are they pomegranates? Or are they just some weird mutated pumpkins? I mean, they were used as lanterns in that color originally. But you notice there's a standard here. So all of these, these crates have a two by three. Each one has a, a two by three uh, plate on the bottom of it to make them compatible with this sliding space here and also compatible with the forklift. And that includes this one over here. So those are all interchangeable. It's all a little temporary little uh, kind of subsystem that they've come up with for now, at least for this one set. These also use that same system so they can all play together, but I don't know what else they would play with, unfortunately. Also included is this orange colored shopping cart. This is the same one that was first introduced in the Friends line. And here you have even more uh, produce. So another dark colored uh, medium nougat baguette, red apple, uh, banana, and some more grapes down there. This forklift, in my opinion, is pretty much the most perfect thing in the set. It's almost a perfect minifig scaled forklift just in general. I think it looks great. It felt good to put it together and it looks super realistic. This is this is just about peak construction and material handling stuff in Lego. It's almost peak vehicle design, I'd say, in, Le in Lego for minifig scaled city styled stuff. It's so smooth, but again, the construction itself is very, very simple. They came up with this design for the, the fork system a long time ago. It's the second generation one. Formerly they used springs, but in modern generations, they use this very, very tight rubber band, which unfortunately is just way too tight because if you accidentally slip your finger off of that, whatever is on top of this is just gonna fly and it's gonna fly tall and fast and far. And that's a little bit unfortunate. You can angle this back, but it angles back quite a bit, which is a bit much. And yeah, just this part here does not work great. You are able to get this down to the ground. You can pick up things most of the time, but then it's gonna be carrying the load always way up in the air, which is, which is just a bit, a bit much. You know, if you're driving along and then you stop with this thing, it kind of wants to tilt forward. So that's the one thing that still needs to be fixed, I think. This car is built on the same chassis, interestingly, as the forklift. And it is also just about perfectly minimized in size and yet perfectly functional. It has opening doors. You take the roof off easily to put a minifigure in there. It just has a single, single seat, you know, single seating position. But it's a car, you know? In the age of four and 10, excuse me, in the age of eight and 10 stud wide Speed Champions cars that can hold two figures. Well, look at this. Here's a four stud wide, four by six platform car that can hold one figure. That's not bad. The design is, it's cute. It's classic in a way, and it just works. They're trying to say it's an electric car because they put that one printed tile on the front. That's a sticker there. That's a sticker there. But hey, this thing totally works and I dig it. Looking at the first couple of figures, the one on the left is a named character. It's Mr. Produce himself. The printing for the torso is really good. The printing for the legs is unfortunate because it's just not opaque enough. I mean, look at that. You can see right through and it's just kind of weak. The, the top is fine though. And I like the design of it. On the right, you get the pea pod person with a sign that they carry around to, to promote, you know, buying fresh produce at the place. And there's something especially good about that figure better than usual. Take a look at the print. Look at that. Look at that print. That's very nice. Yeah, the orange could have been a little bit more opaque, definitely, but the graphic design there is very nice. Look at the back of this, no, uh, no alternate face, unfortunate. 
unfortunately, that is a miss. But the interesting thing about this figure is that she has a full printed torso underneath. And not only that, they also include in the set a hairpiece for her. So you take the costume off and she becomes just a regular person, a full, complete regular person, which is very good. I appreciate that. I also appreciate the first ever Lego prosthetic leg official piece here on this figure that's dual molded in. The legs themselves are dark azure, and then this is dual molded in with the dark bluish gray color. And it just has a an, an open base to it. So it's able to fit over like a bracket is able to fit over a, uh, a stud. And it's pretty perfect. It's really nicely done. I believe that is regular ABS down there and then has the softer standard plastic used at the, the top. So you get the same sort of surface texture there as you usually do. And it shows that Lego is able to create a leg joint that is very, very short. Um, I don't know if that means that they will be able to start making the extra short, the shortest, you know, kid style legs with the adjustable joint, you know, with the ability to have articulation because of the, the shape of the the surround for the joint piece there but i just appreciate what they did here i also like both of these torsos especially the one on the left it just looks interesting to me and different this is a printed piece over here with the the notes looks pretty good and i like the hairs too i like everything about both of these figures except for the fact that there are no alternate faces you know we can always use more faces more variety in in that way but i do fear that this figure in particular might have shown a little bit of uh, a little bit of a a mouth on the back with that hair piece the way that it comes up in the middle this one should have been uh, a two-facer these are the leftover parts notice the bright green pieces versus the regular green and the sticker sheet looked like this not too bad but a couple of those were just uh, license plates which are kind of unnecessary it's great to get a grocery store, any kind of regular normal store from Lego in the city line with minifigures and stuff. And most of the stuff that's here is at least good. It could be a little bit better. I'll talk more about that. But first, price real quick, $70 US is not good. Originally thought this was, this was going to be $50 US and super happy about that. Uh, I could see it in 2022 with all of the crazy inflation and everything, even being 60 Oh, that hurts, but I can see it. 70 is just too much. Plain and simple. Wait for a sale. Let's see if the system is working again, where Lego starts the retail price, the suggested retail price, higher than it should be, and then most retailers cut off the price pretty early on. Hopefully that system will work as intended as it was starting to work back in 2019 and as it does work in many countries in the EU. Doesn't work that way. It hasn't worked that way in the U.S., uh, in the past two to three years, but we'll see as things start to, to normalize again a little bit. It's very easy to look at this and say, oh, it comes with a base plate. That's why, I mean, it comes with a road plate and that's why it's overpriced. Road plates are forced into sets to make them overpriced. Road plates are forced into sets to trick us somehow into thinking that we need to pay more money. That's not how it works. I reject that illogic soundly always, every single time. Why? Because Lego sells the road plates in a big pack of them for 20 bucks. One road, basically what we have here in this set road plate wise is $4 worth at retail is not responsive. That one piece is not responsible. Now, could they have left that out and instead given this a roof, an easy to remove roof? Yes. Could they have expanded the thing instead a little bit instead? Yes, I, I think many things could have been done if they had left the, the road plate out. They could have used that budget to, to improve this a bit, but it's overpriced because it's overpriced. The suggested retail price is too high because because it is, but everything else is pretty good. The, the, the store looks a little bit plain when there's nobody in it, but put some people in it, you know, and it's got enough room for the cart, which just looks very nice in the orange color, contrasty. Uh, you know, there's enough room for that to go around the aisles. Everything's pretty accessible for our huge fig hands. This is legendary. Figures are good. There's a lot of, I like the stickers and the prints as well. There's a lot of good stuff here. See that price come down. And yeah, that's about it. That's about it. You can use some modification if you like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you again very soon.